The BRSCC BMW Compact Cup is brought to you by Nankang Tyres and Gas Shocks. Hello and welcome to Alton Park, situated in the stunning Cheshire countryside for the second round of the BRCC BMW Compact Cup. James Gornall currently topping the table and is looking to duplicate his double victory from the first round. Here's Andrew McEwen to get you up to speed with the season so far. Reigning champion James Gornall made his intentions clear in race one at Silverstone, leaving the rest of the field to provide the entertainment. Back of outside the podium places were as close as ever, but a red flag at two thirds distance gave Gornall a comfortable win. Ian Jones's race two challenge lasted half a lap. Once again, the fight was on for fourth place. Giles Dawson came out on top, while Gornall took another win ahead of repeat podium finishers Steve Daly and Ian Jones. Gornall's perfect score puts him at the top of the table with Ian Jones in second after 10 drivers received penalty points for flag infringements. So the battles at the front are as epic as ever. However, it's not just experienced boys having fun out there. Silverstone was the first taste for many newcomers to the championship and we caught up with some of them to find out their thoughts. It's a fantastic grid, it's really evenly balanced. I mean, I got into BMWs just because I drive them on the road myself and I'm a fan of the manufacturer, so I thought it would be a great time to come in and do some real drive competitive racing, which is easy to enter at a decent cost. Silverstone was your first time out in any race car ever. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you find it? Oh, yeah, I thought it was fantastic. It's a really great track. I've never raced that before. It's an easy track to, or easier track to overtake than somewhere like here, where it's much narrower and a lot faster in certain places. So, but no, I'm having a great time and looking forward to the rest of the season. We'd never thought that we'd be able to do something on this level as motorsport. The stock car racing was something that we did as a club sport. Um, and we come into the BMWs because it's it's an affordable championship. Um, it's close, it's one make, everybody's the same. Um, and it's all down to drivability, that's what I like. So we, uh, we're just going to push on from here and see how we get on for the rest of the season. I had a reasonably good result for my first ever race at Silverstone. I qualified top 10 here, which isn't too bad for a for a, for a beginner, so I'm, I'm pretty happy, yeah. And it's, you've joined uh, your brother, Sam Yates, uh, as a two-car team. That's right, yeah. My, my dad's been uh, racing for since Pontius was a pilot, as he says. My brother's done a good ten years now, so it shouldn't take me too long to catch him and pass him. He's pretty average, to be honest. I'd like to go forward, and if I finish in the top ten, I think I should be pretty pleased with that. My second ever race and anything. That's my plan, finish top ten. Well, let's see whether Jack can get that top 10 and also keep an eye on all of our novices as the cars start forming up now for race one. Here's how they line up. It's the pace setters from Silverstone. James Gornall and Ian Jones are making up the front row. James Nook Brown and Sam Carrington Yates row two ahead of Giles Dawson and Owen Hunter on the third row. There is no Steve Daly though. He has a broken gearbox and won't be starting. Well, Ben Huntley and Jack Yates have their best qualifying results so far. Ray McDowell is new to the series, a Scottish driver in Joe Wiggins' car from last season. Jonathan Atkinson in 19th, also a newcomer from north of the border. Nicola Gillat, another newcomer, an MX5 and Brick car driver, she will start down on the 14th row of the grid. So the cars are lining themselves up. Three cars at the back of the field. Meanwhile, Riri Clark, Peter Dell and Phil Adcock, they were excluded from qualifying, so they'll set off from the back of the grid with a 10-second penalty as well. The front of the grid, though, well and truly formed. Giles Dortson, one of uh, many onboard cameras we have to bring you over the course of the race. The lights go out. We're on board with him for the start. Sam Carrington Yates makes a bad start. James Nook Brown, though, uh, the other driver on the second row of the grid, makes a good start but has nowhere to go because side by side for the race leading to Old Hall Corner for the first time are James Gornall and Ian Jones, top two in the championship and they make their way out of Old Hall, still side by side, so they'll be side by side down towards Cascade as well, several cars running wide on the exit of the first corner, James Duck Brown in third place has a grandstand view of Ian Jones going up the inside into the left-hander, oh he loses the rear of the car, he gets into the side of James Gordle, and Gordle is off the road, James Gordle the championship leader in big big trouble, he will rejoin but pretty much right at the back, Alan Caulfield is off as well, and James Nut Brown leads the race down towards Island Bay. and now Ian Jones is off again, Ian Jones bang into the tyre wall, a big big hit for the man who was second in the points coming into this second meeting of the year but he's out of this race and that is going to do his championship aspirations no good at all 
Well, what a dramatic start to proceedings here at Alton Park. Ben Huntley there making a nice move up the shell hairpin, but the top two drivers in the championship, separated by just 12 points arriving here, have both had early dramas. They made contact at Cascades, and then Ian Jones contact in a big way with the tyre wall on the end of the Lakeside Straight, one of the fastest points on the circuit. Well, um, over Hilltop we go. It is Nut Brown that leads the way. Giles Dawson second. And Owen Hunter into third place, having a much better weekend here at Alton Park than he had last time out at Silverstone. Then it's Gordon McMillan, Matt Parks and Mark Skeet. So those two also having a really good run here at uh, Alton Park in the first race. Through Nickerbrook Corner, up the hill towards uh, Druids they will go. And there is some good news. Ian Jones out of the car and appears to be OK, but his car most definitely is not. Right then, leaders at Druids and nothing in it between the top two. James Nook Brown and Giles Dawson. Oh, that's Ray McDowell, unfortunately, the newcomer to the series. The car that, as I mentioned, will be familiar to viewers from uh, the last uh, season of the Compact Cup. Joe Wigan took that car to uh, many uh, decent results and race wins last year. The race leaders are back at Lodge. Top three as one as they go through Deer Leap and up and over the hill. This is Giles Dawson in second place. We're in the slipstream trying to close in now on the race leader. There is James Gordon, by the way, the white and orange car in the background. 29th place he rejoined. He's already worked his way slowly past a few more. This is a replay of what happened. And you can see Ian Jones in front just lost the rear of the car as he turned into Cascades. Very easy to do on cold tyres. Ran out of road and sort of collected James Gordle on the way. So Gordle rejoined right towards the back. Meanwhile, Alan Caulfield was getting tagged by somebody into a half spin that he did well to gather hold of and rejoins some way down as well on board with Keith Towers. And this is what happened to Ray McDowell. Look, Ben Huntley, by the looks of it, uh, got into the side of him. And uh, Huntley also lost a few places, but not quite as many as McDowell. Mark Skeets makes his way right through Ireland. Ben, that, that's Charles Dawson. Charles Dawson is off from second place now at Ireland. What a, what a topsy-turvy start to the race this has been. Giles Dawson throwing away a very, very good position, potentially, anyway. He was right on the tail, of course, of James Nookbrown, and Giles was very much looking for his first race win in the, uh, in the Compact Cup, but that uh, opportunity has now gone begging. So Giles Dawson off the road. That now promotes Owen Hunter into second place, and everyone else behind has also gained a position. Thomas Langford we're on board with. He will have benefited from all of that. Not far behind the leading train of cars. So Nut Brown leads the way. Owen Hunter's now flicked his hazards on. I don't know whether that's to try and distract the race leader or not. Then it's McMillan third. Fourth place for Parks, fifth is Skeets, and sixth place for Sam Carrington Yates. So Sam Carrington Yates is now on the fringes of the top five after having started fourth but had that poor start, didn't he? But in a way, it probably kept him out of trouble with all of the drama on the opening lap. Speaking of drama, this is what happened to Giles Dawson, and he just lost the rear of the car. Very similar to what we saw for Ian Jones on the first lap down at Cascades. Uh, threw a very quick left-hander, ran out of road whilst trying to save the moment, but did a very good job to keep the car out of the gravel trap. So well done for Giles for not getting beached, but Unfortunately, he's thrown away potentially a really good result. James Gordle there diving up the inside of David May. And that is another position picked off as he makes his way into the right-hander at Nick and Brooke. Jack Yates there, the white and blue car on the outside just behind the two white and purple cars. He's been off at Cascades, we believe, so that's why he's dropped down the order. The two purple and white cars in front of him are Simon Welch and Alan Caulfield. He'll try and find a way past them if at all possible. And at the back of the train, the white car with the purple wheels, that's Rory Clark, who started down in 30th position. The next car he's trying to find a way past is the uh, red, yellow and blue number 23 of David Ashforth, up towards Druid. Not normally an overtake opportunity, but Rory should be quicker than some of the drivers around him. And yeah, throws it up the inside and from both the onboard and the external view. A great look at what was a pretty uh, tough move to make there at the inside into one of the most daunting corners on the circuit. There are several daunting corners there around the Alton Park circuit. Here's one of the better overtaking opportunities into Lodge Corner. Alan Caulfield at the inside of Simon Welch and he makes the move stick. So the Jigsaw Marquis car goes up a position. And has Jack Yates been able to follow him through, I wonder? Certainly. Allen is looking in the mirrors as they make their way towards Old Hall Corner. And yes, there, Jack Yates is also ahead of Simon Welch now. So Nut Brown leads the way. Then Hunter McMillan, Park, Skeets and Carrington Yates, the top six. Thomas Langford is seventh. Charles Dawson rejoined in eighth. David Sharp is ninth. Ben Huntley is in tenth place. James Gordon, meanwhile, is already up into twelfth position, having rejoined in twenty-ninth. And Huntley here moving up into ninth place ahead of David Sharp. Wherever you look, there are battles going on. This is what we love about compact cup racing. Ben Huntley wants David Sharp to work with him now so they can potentially catch up to the rest of the field. Here's battle for 19th now. Simon Welch, Rory Clark tagged onto the back of this. And that the uh, number 63 car in between them is Tim Scott Andrews, the red machine. Through the left, through the right, through the left again out of Britain. It's crucial to get a good exit up the hill towards 
well, over Hilltop and down towards the Hislop chicane. Rory Clark not really close enough though to Tim Scott Andrews at this point, I don't think, to make a move. Tim, in fact, is defending the inside line and possibly thinking he's going up the inside of Simon Welch, which he does. And Simon saw him coming at the last second and Rory Clark takes full advantage, thinks, I could get two places here. He's already ahead of Simon Welch and he tried to get up the inside of Tim Scott Andrews then into Nicker Brook. Did that one work? No. Tim slammed the door in his face and Rory has to make do with just one position game, but that was some pretty close quarters racing. Now, this is the battle for third place. Gordon McMillan has been caught by Matt Parks and Sam Carrington Yates and Parks ran wide there at Shell trying to make the move stick for third and might actually end up losing fourth place. Yes, he does because Sam Carrington Yates is there to take the opportunity of moving through. So Carrington Yates now goes fourth. Can he make the podium? Can he find a way past Gordon McMillan, I wonder? Out of Britain's they go. Oh, that's Simon Welch and that battle we've been documenting further down the order has gone pear-shaped at Cascades and Simon Welch has ended up pointing the wrong way. What happened here on board with Simon? Oh, and contact through the right-hand kink at Denton's. That was focusing and there goes Peter Dell. So Peter Dell just to pout missed him. That was all very close for comfort, but luckily they all rejoined without too much damage. Now Gordon McMillan in third, started to get back away now from Carrington Yates, Matt Parks, and then Mark Skeets, the yellow car, making that a four-way uh, battle now for the bottom step of the podium. In towards Lodge Corner. And is anyone gonna duck out of line and try and make a move here? They're not, but they are starting to reel McMillan in. So it looks as though maybe Carrington Yates has had a moment somewhere possibly defending from Ben Huntley. The leaders, meanwhile, as close as ever as we go on to the final lap of the race. So Nook Brown leading the way. Owen Hunter in second position is still right with him. He's been with him since the start of the race or, or since uh, Charles Dawson threw away second place anyway. And Owen was able to inherit that uh, second position. Down into Cascade, not close enough to pass here. It's all about the exit speed now down the lakeside straight. You can see Hunter is tighter to the apex curb and you can see the extra couple of miles an hour that gives him on the exit of the turn. Sits in the slipstream now down towards the island bend. No overtaking here, really, because that's uh, not quite a flat-out corner. You can see there is a dab on the brakes, but Hunter is closing all the way through. Much, much faster through the left hand. He's going to look to the inside, but that route is blocked. And uh, it's James Nook Brown's every right to defend the inside line. Will he run wide on the exit of the corner? He does not. Meanwhile, further back, that is Nicola Gillat, uh, Gillett, sorry, who has uh, a car running off wide in front of her. And that is a fairly easy position that uh, Nicola will pick up. We're going to see a replay from on board with Phil Adcock, who it was that Nicola was getting past, and Phil, oh, hands all over the place, but just to pound, managed to uh, catch that one and uh, recover, but he does lose the place. Leaders through the same corner now, James Nook Brown and Owen Hunter, and there's one more opportunity, possibly, for Owen to attack. He gets a slightly better run out of Druids. Is he late enough on the brakes towards Lodge Corner? Karen, uh, uh, James Nook Brown, sorry, uh, defends the middle ground, so Owen Hunter takes the wide line in, carries much more speed through the apex, but I think James Nook Brown might just hang on. It's going to be a bit of a drag race run to the flag but James Nook Brown is going to take not only his first win in the compact cup his first ever race win in a car brilliant stuff that from James Nook Brown Owen Hunter in second position gets a good result as well though and uh, here as the battle further back this is James Gordon who has caught remarkably the fight for third place. Gordon McMillan is going to hang on to third place, I think, from San Carrington Yates in fourth. But James Gordon, with a brilliant recovery drive, worked his way right onto the tail of that group. So, Nook Brown leads the way. Owen Hunter is second. Then McMillan, Carrington Yates and Matt Park. It's Gordon McMillan's first podium, that, by the way. Whilst Matt Parks and Mark Skeets have their best ever results in the championship. Keith Towers and David May are 12th and 13th. Good results for them, too. Lots of places gained for Rudd and Dell and Simon Welch uh, further down the order, too. Ian Jones, though, with a very badly damaged car. Will he be out for race two? It's a tough one. I had uh, Owen on my back for the majority of it and it was just trying to defend him going into the hairpin but I knew I had the uh, exit speed coming out of it so I, I held on to the very end. I've had Dave to thank for this, he's my mechanic, I've been working with him for the last two years. I'd also like to say a big thank you to my new sponsors Late Wheels um, for sponsoring me this year so it's been a big help um, and also my sponsors from the past few years, SMC, I'd like to thank them as well for their previous uh, input to the team yeah i mean i was very fortunate i got a good start and then um james and ian came together around cascade so i managed to cash in on their mishaps um and it all just sort of happened around me and i managed to just pick up the pieces if i'm honest i'm lacking a bit of straight line power i mean that's where i mainly say i was losing out on james but i mean it's a tough circuit you've got to have the complete package to be competitive here and um i've just got to do what i can do i don't think i'll be as lucky in the second race if i do i will be very pleased a really, really hard race. I had Matt Parks 
and uh, Sam Carrington Yates hounding me all through the race. I inherited third place, which was great. The front runners fell off at the first corner, and then I just kept it steady, kept it safe, and drove a line where people hopefully couldn't get past me and just managed to hold it to the line. Well, that race was full of entertainment, and the good news is we get to do it all over again. Race two coming up after the break. Hello and welcome back to Alton Park. Race number two for the BMW Compact Cup is on its way. Here are some drivers to watch out for. Rory Clark put on an overtaking masterpiece in race one. From the back of the grid, he was able to make up 15 places. It's not the only time he's been able to do that this year, though. In the first three races of the season, he's made up nearly 50 positions. Steve Daly's gearbox issue in qualifying meant he was a non-starter in race one. Race two is his chance to keep his title campaign alive. But most remarkably of all, Ian Jones will be back on the grid after this monster shunt in race one. The car may not look great, but it's raceable and he'll be looking to try and score some points. Well, here is Ian Jones' car. It is not quite the same shape it was when they arrived at Dalton Park this weekend, but he will be out there and he'll be starting uh, fairly high up on the grid. James Gordon and he share the front row again. Sam Carrington Yates now in Hunter Row 2. Charles Dawson and James Nookbrand are race one winner on the third row. Then Hunter and Gordon McMillan are next. Steve Daly, ninth on the grid, really needs some good points from this one. So, a dramatic first race here at Alton Park. What is in store for us in race number two? Remarkably, we've got more or less all of the cars back out there. There you can just see the back end of Ian Jones's car on the front row of the grid as we ride on board with our race one winner, James Nook Brown, who gets away nicely again. He made a good start in the first race, didn't he? And he's already ahead of Sam Carrington Yates, I think, on the run towards Old Hall Corner. But it's James Gornall versus Ian Jones again. Now, these two made contact, remember, on the first lap of race one. Sensibly, I think, Ian Jones's car really doesn't look great, does it? But he has managed to uh, hold on to second place. He backed out of the move around the outside of Gornall that time. So it's Gornall from Jones from Hunter, the top three. And Giles Dawson tried to cut the inside and steaming around the outside. That's Stephen Daly. Stephen Daly has made loads of positions already. Alan Caulfield, I think, is pulling off there in Old Hall Corner, not uh, a spin. That looked like mechanical issues. But the white and orange car there, side by side for about fourth or fifth place, that is Steve Daly from ninth on the grid. He's lost out to Giles Dawson and James Nookbrown on the run down the lakeside straight. But the car definitely seems to be working all right, and Daly is fired up. Through Ireland, Ben, we go on board with Ben Huntley. That's Mark Skeets in the yellow and black car in front of us through the shell hair bin. And Ben doesn't make, isn't able to make a position there, but Steve Daly is. He's alongside now. James Nook Brown on the run towards the British chicane, but Nook Brown has the inside line for the left hander. Is Daly going to brave it out around the outside? Yes, he is. Steve Daly well and truly up for this in race two. He needs to score big points. He needs to score them now. On board with Tom Langford, who makes a great start. Oh, and then can't find a gear. And <laughs> the positions he gained on the initial jump, he then loses again. Oh, and then Alan Caulfield's car suddenly slows. Oh, we saw Alan pulling off to the side of the track, didn't we? On board with Nicola Gillett. Oh, and well, why, why not try about five wide into the first corner? That was very interesting stuff indeed in the midfield. Shows just how competitive the field is up and down. Now, Ian Jones is in second place. The car, though, cannot be driving quite as well as it should be. And he's rather dropped away now from James Gordon, the race leader. And there's a bit of a train gathering behind him. He's uh, on board with Giles Dawson now. He's winning in fourth place. That's Owen Hunter in front of us. But the first of those black cars, the Crocodilla livery machine, is that of Ian Jones. Is Well, Ian uh, put that car through a bit of a transformation over the winter. Great shot that was of Charles Dawson sideways over the curbs at Old Hall Corner. Uh, yes, the Ian Jones car was completely refurbished over the winter. It might need completely refurbishing again, I think, before the next round of the championship. But he is, for the time being, holding on to second. Rory Clark's uh, overtaking masterclass continues. That was a nice move on the inside of Martin Gadsby, the number nine car at Old Hall Corner. Rory, who was excluded from qualifying here at Alton Park, had to start from back from both races, but he really has proven that you can overtake around this place. It's not easy to do, but uh, Rory has certainly managed it on board with James Nook Brown up towards the shell hairpin he goes running in sixth place for the time being so that's Steve Daly ahead of us remarkably in fifth position gearbox issues in qualifying have rather derailed his weekend but at least he can salvage something from race two 
as Ian Jones somehow is still hanging on to second place. Owen Hunter will be frustrated here because he knows he's quicker than Ian. He can see the race leader James Gornall escaping up the road and Owen Hunter very much feels like he can challenge for the championship this season. Had a bit of a weekend to forget at Silverstone. The drop scores though might just help bring him back on track once we uh, get out of this second meeting at Alton Park. So as many points as he can score in this one will be well worth the effort. Through Nickerbrook Corner they go. Owen Hunter inch perfect across the apex there of Nickerbrook. Bit of a tail slide on the exit of the corner though, so Jane Jones is able to extend the margin slightly under the Pirelli Bridge and towards Druid's corner. They go. Very quick part of the circle. Well, Jones' car still seems fairly quick in a straight line, doesn't it? It's maybe just not handling quite right. But we saw in race one that Hunter's car is really well planted. When he was trying to find a way past uh, James Nookbrown, he was able to carry much more speed through the high-speed corners. That's exactly what he just did then through Druid. He's prized the door open on the inside, and this is his golden opportunity to go through. And Owen Hunter moves into second place. A picture-perfect move that was from Owen. And he's now found a way past the rolling wreck that is Ian Jones' car. The exhaust is starting to flap around slightly on the back of that machine now. It'll be grateful, I think, if it can just hold itself together for the 15-minute uh, duration of the race. He's actually coming back now to it, Hunter into uh, Old Hall. This is the back of the 25th. Nicola Galat, Simon Welch, then Rudd and uh, Peter Dell in the number 89 car, all in a long line of cars, making their way through Britons. Oh, and sideways and pointing the wrong way, I'm afraid is, oh, and then coll collected by Simon Welch. Now, who is that that's lost it? That is the number 79 machine, isn't it? Um, of James Stanbury. Oh, blimey, that was close. And the car just came back and just clicked the side of Simon Welch's car. Ah, now, Ian Jones, his problems are increasing here, aren't they? His exhaust, which I mentioned a few laps ago, was slightly loose, is now completely loose. It's dragging on the floor. Giles Dawson is smelling blood in the water and looks at the inside of Druids, but Ian Jones is still fighting on here. All the car gets a big sideways moment through the apex as well, though, and the door is opened again. I think this time Giles might be able to go through. Ian Jones is being shown the black and orange flag, the mechanical warning flag, saying there is a, an issue with your car that you may not be aware of. Please, you could you come into the pit lane and get it fixed? Well, the racket that thing is making. I'd imagine Ian Jones is fairly aware of it. He's also now been overtaken by Steve Daly. James Nookbrown, the next man to try and do so. And that is Gordon McMillan and Sam Carrington Yates. Now, they are two front-running drivers and, well, possibly already contact was made there. McMillan was sideways and as he came back across the track, he tanked the rear left corner of Sam Carrington Yates's car. They will both rejoin, but they've lost a lot of ground. Mark Skeets here, taking seventh place away, or trying to anyway, from Ben Huntley, who leaves him just enough room. But he gets edged out onto the grass as a result. That will lose his momentum. He's fighting for a gear as well there with Ben on the exit of the corner. Now, Mark Skeets is around here somewhere. He's to the right-hand side, but we've got the inside line for Cascades. Ben Huntley coming back and in the car, shaking and sliding around as he goes through that full commitment left-hander. And I think he's gone back through. So, great driving we've seen this weekend from Ben Huntley. He's just about keeping Mark Skeets at bay. And then that looks like Matt Parks behind in the 38 machine. Matt started 10th, coming in ninth at the moment. It's a seventh place still held by Ben Huntley then. As James Gornall is on his final lap. And it's been a much, much more serene drive this time around for James Gornall. This was how he planned it. A lights to flag victory in race two at Alton Park. James Gornall takes the race victory and extends his championship margin. Well, a brief uh, blip this morning, but he has been able to uh, salvage something for the weekend. Giles Dawson here in third place had been catching Owen Hunter for second, but he's just going to run out of time. So it's Hunter who hangs on to the runner-up position. James Gornall, though, is the race winner. And it's been a fine performance in that one Gornall from Hunter from Dawson he will therefore retain or hold on to his championship lead Mark Skeets and David Shaw with good results whilst Jack Yates does get that top 10 that he wanted further back McDowell and David May Ray McDowell 14th not bad in his second ever race in the championship whilst Tony Rudd made some good progress Peter Dell and Nicola Glatt equally after avoiding the spinning James Stanbury Ian Jones was excluded in the end for ignoring the black and orange flag so that means that James Gornall extends his championship lead to 21 points now over James Nook Brown in second Owen Hunter is third still in contention so too though are Giles Dawson and Gordon McMillan in fifth so it's been a great day of racing for the Nankang Tyre BMW Compact Cup and another first-time winner in James Nook Brown. Join us again next month for the third round at Snetterton.